I'm starting off with timeline. So first we have the Council of Nicaea. So the Council of Nicaea, they talk about the Trinity. So we're gonna sign Trinity. So you got three fingers and they're gonna like pass under your hand and come out as one. So Trinity, Council of Nicaea, because they discuss the Trinity. Trinity. Augustine of Hippo, so do an ASL A, and then you're gonna do two X's. So let me just double check, because I don't wanna mess this up. I messed up my signs last week. So an X, so do two X's, and then you're just gonna signify, do like this, like change, because Augustine of Hippo changed to Christianity, and then Jerome completes the Vulgate, so do a J, and then you're just going to hold open a book, hold open your Bible, because the Vulgate is the Bible in Latin. Visigoth Sacrum. So sign a V. And I'm like so nervous. I'm going to give you the wrong sign. Sign a V. And then you act like you're grabbing things, like you're sacking Rome. And then do your R. Then we have Middle Ages, circa 450 to circa 1500. So when we do that, I'm just like putting my hands like proper, oh, properly together. You know? So you have one hand that's like flat, and then you have the other hand like Middle Ages. So you can just have that hand like circle around and then come right in the middle. Council of Chalcedon. So this is where they discussed the two natures of Jesus, God and man. So just do two fingers and then sign our sign that we've used for Jesus. Western Roman Empire falls to barbarians. So do a W and then you're gonna begin at your shoulder and you're gonna move west. So whatever is west for you, um, move west and then falls. Western Roman Empire falls to barbarians. And so you just kind of like go into like Hulk mode for barbarians and you can do like a mean face. So that's it for our timeline motions. So next I'm gonna do geography and then I will show you how I'm doing that on my map. And then uh, we're gonna move right into history from that. So I'll just keep showing you my map and how I'm gonna point to that. Um, show them the history sentence using the map because it has such a strong correlation this week. For geography this week, we have the Mid-Atlantic world and we have just a huge correlation with our history. So I'm gonna start with geography and then they will keep their maps as we work on our history sentence. So first, we're doing the Mid-Atlantic world. This has to do with the age of exploration and all those explorers who are sailing out of Portugal and Spain to discover the new world and um, to map out unknown places. So I'm gonna give my class little googly eyes to move around the map. They'll obviously color a blank map and then I'll give them these. And I, if I had little boats, that would be super cute, but I thought they could do the googly eyes that are looking and exploring, kind of like how an explorer looks through their telescope thing. So um, first we have the Cape of Good Hope down here, which is Africa's foot is how I'm gonna have them remember that. And then over to the Strait of Magellan, I just wanted to show you. So this is out of the foundations guide and the Strait of Magellan is marked here and they just kind of mark it below. I've also seen it marked to the side where they'll write Strait of Magellan right here or down below. Um, but if you look really closely, the Strait of Magellan actually passes through this little tiny space so that you don't have to sail around the south of South America, you can actually go through there. Um, so the Strait of Magellan is marked like this, or you can mark it below, but it really passes through. So you could just have it marked to pass through South America there. Um, and then we have the Canary Islands. This is two little islands. Well, actually, I don't know that it's actually two. It looks like two or three on here right off of Africa's coast. And then the Treaty of Tortesia, this long line um, that runs north and south along the map. So you can give them a little interesting fact about this. You can see that the Treaty of Tortesia 
runs through the country of Brazil. And I'm going to ask my class if they know what language do they speak in Brazil, which is Portuguese. And so part of the reason that they speak Portuguese in Brazil and they speak Spanish in all of these other South American countries is because of this Treaty of Tordesillas between Portugal and Spain that everything to the east of this line is Portuguese and everything to the west would be Spanish. But treaty between Spain and Portugal here. So that's why they speak Portuguese in Brazil. It seems like the Portuguese were a little short-sighted to only get this part of South America and then Spain got the rest of it. So anyway, it's kind of interesting, the Treaty of Tordesillas. So the song that I'm going to do with them is to the tune of Gilligan's Island. And here's the thing, you can sing this like if it makes sense to you to move west to east, you can do this tune. If it makes sense to you to go east to west, you can do that. So I'm going to start from the east just so I can move in this direction. But you can also do the song to where you go backwards. So I'll sing it both ways. Strait of Magellan, Treaty of Tordesillas, Canary Islands. Cape of Good Hope, this is the mid-Atlantic world. Or, Cape of Good Hope, Canary Islands, Treaty of Tordesillas, Strait of Magellan, this is the mid-Atlantic world. So when we move into geography, I'm gonna have this map on display. It's just a larger map. But I'm, I won't have all of my little post-it notes on there first. It'll just be the map marked with the geography we learned this week. So first, um, we'll, I will go through each of these explorers that they learn about in the sentence, and I will place their names on the map as I go through. And then I will tell them about each explorer Let's say so our first one is Diaz who rounded the Cape of Good Hope and I'll put his name on there and then I'll tell them a little bit about Diaz and then I'll move on to Amerigo and I'll talk about him and then I'll put Balboa on the map and talk about him, Magellan and Coronado. And then I will have them get their maps out. The first European explorer we're learning about in our history sentence is Diaz. Between the late 1400s and the mid 1500s, Diaz rounded the Cape of Good Hope. So the Cape of Good Hope we know is down here at the foot of Africa. So I'm gonna put Diaz right down here so we can remember what, what he rounded. Now, I wanna tell you Diaz was one of the most important European explorers. He led the first trip down here to discover the tip of Africa. Um, the first time he went, he took three ships to search for the southern tip of Africa. And in 1488, he passed the tip of Africa. He passed it, but he didn't know he'd passed it because there was a horrible storm. So he actually did pass it. But because of the storm, he couldn't see, so they turned around and they went back up to port. He's a, he's a Portuguese explorer. Bad. Then another time he tried to go, uh, guess what? They veered too far away from Africa and they actually landed um, in Brazil. Um, so they didn't, they didn't mean to, but they actually found Brazil on that trip. But eventually, um, they, did, they did make it way down and he named it the Cape of Good Hope. Um, and he, this explorer Diaz, he did, he died at the Cape of Good Hope because his ship sank in a storm in 1500. So Diaz is credited with leading the first European expedition to find the tip of Africa, which is called the Cape of Good Hope. Next in our history sentence, we have Amerigo Vespucci, and he was actually an Italian explorer. And the Americas are named for him, 
Amerigo, America. Um, they're actually named after him, even though he never even was in North America or Central America. He actually only reached South America, and he wasn't the first one there, but they're named after him. He, uh, he actually crossed the Atlantic Ocean after Christopher Columbus had made his first voyage of discovery. And if you'll know, if you know, Christopher Columbus actually thought that he had found Asia, but Amerigo did not. He, he went, after he reached South America, he went back, he wrote about it, and in his writings, he called this land a new world. And so later, a map maker, a German map maker, found Vespucci's writings, and he made a world map. And when he made the world map, he labeled South America as America. So Vespucci's first name, we spell it Amerigo. It can also be spelled Americus. And so that was why they called it North America. And they labeled this Central America and this North America, even though Vespucci had never been there. So because he's credited with um, his name is used to name North America, Central America, and South America, I'm going to put him down here in South America because that is the land that he actually traveled to and called the New World in his writings. All right, next we have Balboa. In our song, we say Balboa crossed Central America to the Pacific. So you'll notice, so this is Central America right here. And if you look at the map, there is not like a stream or a river or a break in this land where you can sail through. So he didn't sail, he didn't cross Central America by sailing. He actually had to get out and cross the land. And he crossed, he crossed this little bit right here um, in Panama. And you can see it a little bit better down here in this. This is just a blown up version of uh, that little section. So he crossed this little area here in Panama and that was where he crossed and saw to see the Pacific Ocean. So I'm gonna put Balboa right here. And so you can remember he crossed Central America to the Pacific. Now, Balboa was a conquistador, which means he would conquer. So when he found these lands, he conquered the people and he um, claimed them for as Spain's, as Spanish land. And um, he left for the Americas in 1500. And then eventually in 1519, he was found guilty of crimes, various crimes, and he was beheaded in January of 1519. So Balboa, the conquistador, he crossed Central America to see the Pacific Ocean. He's the first European to see the Pacific Ocean. And then very shortly thereafter, he was beheaded. So after Balboa crosses this little strip of land and sees the Pacific Ocean, that was in 1513, okay? So now fast forward to 1519. Magellan is an explorer from Portugal, right up here. And he is gonna leave in 1519 with five ships. And they go and they sail across the Atlantic Ocean down South America. And when they're going to go around South America, they actually discover this little passage here um, across the tip of South America. And that's where we have the Strait of Magellan. Now. They go on to uh, cross the Pacific. So at this point, they start with five. Now they've got three ships. Three ships are going to continue on to across the Pacific Ocean. They get to the Philippines. After being in the Philippines for about 100 days, he's killed in a fight with the people of the island, and Magellan is actually killed in 1521. So. There's two more ships left. After Magellan's death, two of his ships continue on westward and the, one of those ships survives. One of them makes it to the Indian Ocean and so the Indian Ocean's over here and they actually are able to sail back around the tip of Africa and complete the voyage back into Spain. So start out with five, lost four ships along the way and Magellan actually didn't survive the voyage. 
but it was his fleet, it was his fleet of ships that he had commanded that made the first voyage around the globe. Lastly, we have Coronado, who in search of gold, explored the American Southwest. So here's North America, and this little area right here is the United States of America. And so he explored the southwestern area. So I'm just gonna put his name right over here. We're gonna cover all that southwestern part of um, America. And he was a Spanish explorer. And so his expedition to Mexico to explore this land established Spain's claim to what is now the south southwestern United States. So he set out in 1540 from New Mexico to find new cities, and he was looking for these cities made of gold. He'd heard of these cities made of gold, but really it was just sun-baked clay that looked like a goldish color. So in Coronado's search for gold, he and his crew, these Spanish Europeans, were the first to see places like the Gulf of California, to see the Grand Canyon. They discovered the mouth of the Colorado River. Um, they crossed into California. They, he went on to explore Kansas and he got to see, they, got, they saw the Great Plains and the large bison or the buffalo herds that roamed there. So after we finish geography and history, we're gonna move into math. And what I'm planning to do for my kids is math or size. So we'll just do different exercises as we skip count the 14s. But um, because I think they're gonna have been sitting for a long time and just kind of looking at this map. So I'm gonna get them up and moving. Um, so another option of, for something you could do is you could print off a 14s chart or like you could, so what I've done in the past so that it's, you know, CC, um, approved is I'll just get like another sheet of paper and I just trace this with a marker so it looks exactly like this but then you can print these out and you could have your kids like point to the numbers with a little figurine or something while you sing it so you could um, like use this whatever they used for geography and you could have them point to the numbers as you sing it or another option um, is to use a math wheel. So this is a really cute one. My sister sent this to me like years ago. So I don't have like a, the link that she used for this, but probably just if you Google math wheel, you can find some cute ones. So I'll just, I know I've shown this before, but I'll show you how it works really quick. So you would write whatever number it is that you're multiplying by. So you can see on here there's zero, um, one through 15. So then to fill it out, you're just going 14 times one equals 14. And you just write it, you write the answers in these spaces as you go around. So they could, you if you don't have it like laminated, you could just put it in one of these paper protectors and they could write with a wipe off marker on it. Um, and then they could take it home and practice at home or you could keep them and reuse them however much you want. So, but for my class, we're gonna do exercises um, while we skip count the 14s. So for English, I'm gonna have them fill out this same chart that they filled out last week with reflexive pronouns. So I didn't end up using the one that had like review from the other weeks. I sent it home with them just because I made it and I was like, they can use this or take it or leave it. But I sent it home with them so they could practice at home if they wanted to. But in class, we just had time for this. So I'm gonna use this again. And so for reflexive pronouns, they would fill this out as myself, yourself, himself, herself, itself. And then the plurals, ourselves, yourselves, themselves. So they'll fill that out. We'll go through them a couple of times. And then I had an, I heard another tutor was doing this. And so I wrote up some sentences. So I'll, they're going to have this as like their word bank. And I have them all written, like displayed on my board. Okay. So the, they're, that's like their word bank. And then I'm going to have sentences with a blank 
and they're gonna fill in which one would work. So I think I'm probably gonna write them, it's like I don't have a big whiteboard in my room, which would be perfect. If I had like a big whiteboard, I would write them, these sentences out with a blank, but since I don't have that option, I may just write them like on a white sheet of paper and just do like two sentences per page. I don't know. I'm gonna have the sentences written out with a blank and then they're gonna tell me which reflexive pronoun goes with which sentence. So um, for the first one I have, I was in a hurry, so I washed the dog myself. You're going to have to drive to work today. So you are going to have to drive yourself to work today. I wanted to impress her. He wanted to impress her, so he made dinner himself. Nicole does chores herself because she doesn't trust others to do them right. That class is a car all by itself. Dad and I painted the fence ourselves. You are too young to go out by yourselves. I may change that one to make it, to make sure it's clear that it's plural. Um, I'm gonna do that. I'll say um, you too. I don't know if that's right. I'll say you guys. <laughs> you guys are too young to go out by yourselves. And the last one, the children saved the church money by making costumes themselves. Um, and then I'll have them all out of order because the way that I have them listed is like they would literally just go through the list and fill in the blanks. So I'll have them all out of order. But I'm going to give them sentences to where they're going to try to put them in the correct spots for the reflexive pronoun. So for Latin, we have the perfect tense again, and I have my Mary Poppins for a visual reminder because she's practically perfect in every way. And Mary, we start with E. So um, she has her carpet bag here, as you can see. And so I'll have a bag where they're gonna pull out one of these endings. And then like whatever, after we sing, we'll sing through it a couple of times. And then I will like have one student pull a card out of the bag and um, we'll just put them in order on the floor in front of us. Um, and then like the next person will pick one and we'll try to put them all in order. Um, so that's one idea. Another idea, you could have them, you could make a few sets of these and then split the class and have them race who can get them in order the fastest and then Every time you race, everybody sings the song to go through the endings. Um, you could play Hot Potato where um, you're playing the song, everybody's singing, and then you stop the music, or whoever it lands on, they have to stand up and do five jumping jacks or five push-ups, or you could make up whatever little exercise thing they need to do. Um, you can also play Duck, Duck, Goose with this, so you could um, have whoever is like it, so they're in the circle and then one person is tapping on each ending, they tap somebody else's head, and then whoever they land on, they're it, and so they just will like chase them around the circle, the other person sits down, and now they get to go and tap people's heads to be in. so anyway my class is going to pull the note cards out order them but other fun ideas with latin is always hot potato um duck duck goose another one that i like to do with especially little ones is just get little temporary tattoos and then just like give a student a tattoo while we sing the latin and then like sing it again and give it to another student until everybody's has the tattoos and if you have just like a giant class or something which I mean you probably don't but if you needed to do like two students at once just have a mom help you to where um, you know you're not having to do it more than you need to for time's sake I'm going to end with science this week so we have what are some aquatic biomes and so I'm gonna say what does aquatic mean just a fancy word meaning water and a fancy sciencey word and biome is another fancy science word meaning regions of the world that have similar climate weather temperature animals and plants 
So like a biome is a region that has same all of the same like similar animals, temperature, weather, climate, plants. Okay, so we've got aquatic, aquatic biomes. And so for like some motions, if you wanted to do ponds and lakes, I'm gonna tell them ponds and lakes are fresh water. So we'll do like a big circle out in front of us like a pond or a lake. Streams and rivers are moving water. This is fresh water that's moving. Wetlands and estuaries are swamp, like swamps. So this is um, brackish water. Does anybody know what brackish water means? This is salt water and fresh water that's kind of mixed. So we're gonna do like, like this. Like we've got, like if you look at a swamp, you can see like some like land and grass, but then you see like water. So, and I'm moving my hand like I'm mixing salt water and fresh water. Um, and then oceans and seas are salt water, and then I'll just do like big waves, like big ocean waves. And so my idea for this one of what I'm gonna do, and I'm saving it for last just because it could could take a little bit of time, but the way I'm doing it, I'm planning for it to not be a huge time consumer. So I'm gonna have them illustrate each of these. So I'll give them a piece of paper, get the coloring stuff out, and I'll say, okay, we're gonna do ponds and lakes. And you have 10 seconds to draw ponds and lakes. So, um, I'll have them divide their paper into like four. So if you like give them paper, my kids have already drawn on this one, but if you like fold it, you know, and then you can make four sections for them, or they could just draw a big, you know, like X on the page and they can do, you know, ponds and lakes over here. Just pick one for ponds and lakes. And you have 10 seconds to fill this space, make it look like ponds and lakes. And then another, Another one, they're gonna do streams and rivers, wetlands and estuaries, oceans and seas. So just give them like 10 seconds, count down from 10, and tell them to draw it just the best they can in that little short amount of time. And then you can go through and say, okay, what are some aquatic biomes? And have a student tell you. Um, you can do like almost like a show me, tell me with this where you could say, okay, show me um, oceans and seas on your paper and so they can show the class and then we all can say them again together however you wanted to do I mean that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna have them I'll introduce it by with the motions and then I'll have them illustrate each of the aquatic biomes themselves on just a white sheet of paper where they have them in the four sections those are my plans for week eight I hope that this video is not coming out too late for some of you. I know I've been getting um, like Facebook messages and I know someone commented on a video that they were needing week eight plans sooner. And so I apologize that I didn't get it out earlier. Um, my community is actually just now, like we haven't done week seven yet. So I'm trying to get a little bit ahead because I know there's some of you out there that are further ahead than my community is, but it was my husband's birthday this week and we had friends visiting from Uganda, so it was just a really busy week and I just kind of make these videos, like I try to sneak in here and do it whenever I have a little bit of little bit of time and um, I just didn't really have a chance to do that this past week, so hopefully it is still going to be out there soon enough to be helpful to some of you. Don't forget that I will link things in the comments of this video, resources that I've used, and um, like my songs and that I download and everything I get through CC Connected, and I will put instructions in there for how to use CC Connected, how to download songs to your computer or to your device so that you can play them during your class or so you can play them at home to your kids. Um, whatever, however you like to do that. Um, I just always have used CC Connected to get that stuff. So um, anyway, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time.